Welcome to Adventures in Grace. This is Jim Hockaday, ready to get into some thoughts concerning what is Christianity as we look at acknowledgement. What really is acknowledgement for, or what's the purpose of acknowledging things before the Lord? It almost sounds like confessing before the Lord, making a confession, a positive confession. Well, it's a little bit more than that, and we're going to see that in just a few moments. Well, number one, we do these videos, and we're encouraged by so many reports that come in and testimonies of individuals beginning to experience God in their lives, and that's the one reason, number one reason why we do these videos, that God would become more real to you, that a relationship would be much more, if you don't mind me using the word, tangible. You say, how can a relationship with God be tangible? Well, you are supposed to be hearing him speak, feeling his presence, amen, and all the other, if you will, um, the senses that you possess in this earthly world, you possess in the spiritual world. In fact, let's say it a different way. You are a spirit, so your spiritual sight and hearing and feeling and taste and smell is something that is normal, to you as a spiritual being. The fact that God has clothed us in a physical composition, then you also have something that complements the real you, which is physical smell and taste and hearing and sight and touch. Keep things in the right perspective, and that is spiritual things first. Well, God ought to be real. We've heightened our senses in this world. We're very good at smelling something, tasting something, seeing, hearing, and touching things in this world. Let's get good at being spirits. A good friend of mine, uh, Ann Durant, made that comment. We need to get good at being spirits, and that is so true. We are spiritual beings, so let's take more time and let's take more thought as spiritual beings to develop ourselves in the senses of the spirit where we're real, very skillful, very perceptive to spiritual touch, spiritual hearing, spiritual sight, and so on and so forth. And so number one, that God would be real in your life. Number two, that you'll get answers to your prayers. And number three, that you would have testimonies to share about what the Lord has done for you. So each and every video, we always go to Matthew eleven twenty-seven 27 to 30 in the Message Bible, which is an invitation from Jesus to us personally that we would actually enjoy and develop in a relationship with the Father God in the same way that he did. And as we share this, notice how that when we get to the place of him actually sharing with us and not holding anything back, the first thing he does is to let you know you probably ought to be at this time tired, burned out, and worn out on religion. Religion that keeps you working on you when you can't do all that much about you. But if you'll make some simple choices to let God be real to you, then he'll work on you. And that's what Jesus says through the rest of this passage. Come to me, get away with me, and then everything from there on out is you being in touch with him. Wow, this is why we're talking about acknowledgement today. So it starts out this way. And Jesus resumed talking to the people, but now tenderly. The Father has given me all these things to do and say. This is unique father and son operation coming out of father and son intimacies and knowledge. No one knows the son the way the father does, nor the father the way the son does. But I'm not keeping it to myself. I'm ready to go over it line by line with anyone willing to listen. Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me, get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me, work with me, watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting upon you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn how to live freely and lightly. Well, praise the Lord. That's such a wonderful invitation. Let's now get over into some things concerning acknowledgement. So I'm going to look over at Ephesians 3 and verse 2, which talks about the dispensation of grace. In other words, a time, a period of time of God's grace. Well, I'm real thankful for that because there was a long period of time of being in the law or under the law in the old covenant. Now, you know, it's amazing. 
is even under the law. Isn't it amazing by sacrificing those lambs and getting cleared uh, from your sin? Isn't it, isn't it amazing that the children of Israel, even though they didn't have a real personal relationship with God, still were able to invoke the very blessing of God and the favor of God upon their lives, that they, they had so much uh, healing that would come to them, prosperity that would come to them, well-being that would come to them. Uh, they would have such great protection as long as they just lived and honored God. But again now, what was it all based on? It was all based on them and their choices, which you say, has anything changed today? Well, in a sense, no, it's about us and our choices. The difference is our choice is a number one choice. Like there's one real choice in the day we live, and that is for you to believe and to embrace and to call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to include him into your life and let what he did for you become the reason why you now have qualified to be a partaker or a recipient of every blessing that God has wrought for you or has purchased for you. This isn't about you making choices to try to earn your right to receive from God. It's making the one choice that allows what Jesus has done for you to be put on your account. Now, so there's only one choice I have to make. Well, there's one main choice. That main choice is not about you getting something. Boy, I wish we could really, and you know what? Let's take the time. It's not about you getting something. And that's how we are in the world. It's all about what am I gonna get out of it? What am I gonna get out of it? Well, your choice to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior is a choice of love that comes from your heart with adoration for the fact that Jesus left his estate in heaven, came as a baby into this earth. We just came through Christmas the last couple of days. We're getting ready to go into a new year. And he left that place of heaven, came to this earth as a man and died on a cross as he showed us for three and a half years specifically what it looked like to have a relationship with the Father God, to walk in the power of the other world, which is the spiritual world, heaven's glory, and to utilize that glory to change things down on this earth, to walk in such abundance and freedom, to live life carefree without any care at all, without any burden and anxiety, with all the worries and the strife of life, to live free from it all, to enjoy here it is, here it is, here it is, a relationship with Almighty God firsthand, a talking, a hearing, and a walking relationship where we're experiencing God every single day. No, it's not. Yes, I do remember back 30 years ago, I experienced the Lord. Well, praise the Lord for that one experience. And maybe you can draw upon that one experience to encourage your heart to step up to the plate and uh, to experience him again. What do you think? See, knowing Jesus is not about getting something. Knowing Jesus is about experiencing someone. And in your experience and your walk in this new existence of knowing God, hearing God, listening to God, following him, studying after the principles of truth that are in the scriptures that we have to read. But let me make this comment. If you didn't have the Bible to read and you were someplace where there was no Bible and no, you know, intelligence as far as the societal, you know, uh, um, knowledge of the world. You didn't have a cell phone to tap into all, you know, to Google and, and, and just, just like that, pull up all your information. Could you find God? And the answer is 100% yes, because he's there to be found. Oh, folks, I tell you, as we begin to walk with Jesus, all the blessings that Jesus has provided for us, it just begins to rain down on us and we begin to experience his goodness. Life doesn't have to go from one valley to the next. It can go from one mountain to the next mountain. 
We don't have to go down into the valley. Oh, you'll be sorely tempted to go into the valley. There may be many oppositions that come with certain crisis here and crisis there. But as you begin to learn how to acknowledge God's grace, God and his influence will begin to show you how to devalue the importance of this world and how to embrace the glory of heaven. Amen. Aren't you thankful that Jesus is Lord? Well, let's get into this. A dispensation of grace. We're in a time period where someone has done something for us and cleared the way for us to experience God, not based on our ability, but based on his. And I love how it says over here in uh, Ephesians. In fact, I'm going to go there real quickly right here, if you don't mind me taking this extra moment. And chapter 3, and it says right here, well, I need to get in the right translation. There we go. Aren't you thankful we got these handy-dandy Bibles we've got? For this reason, I, Paul, Ephesians 3, 1, the prisoner of Christ Jesus for you Gentiles, if indeed you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which was given to me for you, how that by revelation he made known to me the mystery, as I have briefly written already, by which when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men as it has now been revealed by the Holy Spirit and his holy apostles and prophets. Well, what mystery is Paul talking about? He's talking about the great mystery of the church, Colossians chapter 1 and verse 27. Christ is in you, the hope of glory. The hope of glory means now that Christ is in you, you get to actually use the glory of Jesus Christ in your life. It was the presence of God that brought healings, that brought deliverance, that caused the little boy's lunch to be multiplied into prosperity. It's the glory of God that protected Jesus, that caused him to walk carefree because there was nothing in this world that had a hold on him, yet everything about his life was invested in his relationship with his Father. Christ in you, the hope of glory. There's so much there for us to know. So let me go on with what we're talking about here. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 10 and 12 in the Message Bible. I just like this passage because it's a setup from Old, Co Old Covenant understanding about what's going to happen in this new covenant life. This new plan I'm making with Israel isn't going to be written on paper, isn't going to be chiseled in stone. He's talking about we're going to move on from the Ten Commandments, the law, this time I'm writing out the plan in them, carving it on the lining of their hearts. Wow, isn't that awesome? That's what, see, Nicodemus didn't understand that in John chapter 3. He talked to Jesus about, you must be from God because the things you do are God acts. And Jesus went right to the heart and said, well, you need to be born again. And he said, wait a minute. You can't be born again. How can someone that's now grown Go back into his mother's womb and Jesus is like, oh, brother, I thought he was one of the rulers, you know, of the spiritual people here in the synagogue and he doesn't get it. So Jesus even went a little further to talk about, well, that which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of spirit is spirit. I'm talking about a spiritual birth. Wow, thank God. Where was that spiritual birth going to come? Inside of your body, which is what? That's where your spirit is. Your body is just the outer layer that covers your spiritual being. You are a spirit. Praise the Lord, you're a spirit. That means you don't have to live out of, if you will, the laws that govern this earth. You can live out of the laws that govern heaven. And when you're born again, one translation said you must be born from above. Another said you must be refathered from above. Well, if that's the case then, and I'm refathered from above, ought I not to learn how they do things up there? Do I have to wait until I get to heaven for there to be a real victory report? Or can I have a victory report right here and right now? See, we're in the dispensation of grace, which is not about you. It's about Jesus. And if you'll cling to him, everything about him changes you. 
You know, you get around the right people and your perspective can enjoy the changes, if you will, from or rubbing off of how other people think. Someone happens to be very joyful, very positive, and you get around them and you tend to end up becoming a little bit more positive because if you're going to be negative, their positivity shows up your negativity. And you want to change. Yet at the same time, you can get around the wrong person and all of a sudden the subtleties of their negativ negativity gets on you and you end up, you know, just becoming a real grump when you get home. You become someone that's difficult to be around. You always think the worst instead of thinking the best. You don't have any hope in life. It's all just woe is me. And it's having a pity party constantly. You get around, I'm telling you, we, we vacillate between the influence that are around us. Well, we're now in a dispensation of God's grace. The grace of God is everywhere. I say it like this. It's like a nuclear fallout. It's falling in the air. It's like a beautiful snow here in Colorado. And I know you can see behind me, we still have some snow on the ground, even though today's going to get up almost in the 50s. Tomorrow might even reach 60 degrees. No, Colorado windows are not difficult. Every once in a while, you get dumped on with snow, but it just seems like a few days later, it's 40 degrees, 50 degrees, and the warmth of the sun, you walk out with just something like this. You don't even need a heavy coat. It's beautiful. We love it. Amen. Get to see the mountains every day. Praise the Lord, and just look at the beauty of those mountains, and just know, thank God, God is so much greater. He made those mountains and if he could make them the majesty and majestic mountains that I look at, how much more could he do for me in this situation? Maybe I'm buying into it and I'm giving into the idea that it's actually bigger than it really is. Maybe if I just put my focus on how big God is, things will begin to change. Oh, folks, I'm telling you, this is so good right here. And I'll just go ahead and finish this, and we'll give you a wonderful little story today, a grace story. This time I'm routing out the plan in them, carving it on the lining of their hearts. I'll be their God. They'll be my people. This is Hebrews 8, and now we're in verse 11. They won't go to school to learn about me or buy a book called God and Five Easy Lessons. Is there anything going to a school, a, a Bible school to learn? No, there's nothing wrong with going to a Bible school. There's, there's nothing wrong with having multiple Bibles. There's nothing wrong with having multiple translations, multiple books about the Bible and being very learned. But if all your learning still leaves you in a place where God is not real to you, I'd rather have the ignorance of somebody that actually experiences God than to have all the theology in your brain that's so packed full you can't see God for seeing yourself. So there's that wonderful balance there of letting everything that you learn be lived out in the experience of everything that he is. Amen. Let's finish this right here. It says, they'll get to know me by, it says they won't get, uh, uh, oh, let me go back to verse 11. They won't go to school to learn about me or buy a book called God and Five Easy Lessons. They'll get to know me firsthand, the little and the big, the small and the great. They'll get to know me by being kindly forgiven with the slate of their sins forever wiped clean. Hallelujah. Aren't you thankful that what's being said right here is that with the slate of your sins being forever wiped clean, all of your sin being removed, it gives you the right to enter into the presence of God without any fear, condemnation, inferiority, where you can stay with him, where he becomes your safe house. And the more you hang out with him, the changes become absolutely startling. Oh, this is going to be such a fresh and new year. What kind of changes are you going to make? If there's only one change that you'll make, and that is every day, allow yourself to connect your heart to God. And the things that we'll continue to share with you about acknowledging him means you'll be inviting him to be a part of every single thing you do. And if that becomes the way that you begin to live, God will blow your socks off. Amen. Well, here's a wonderful grace story right here, just talking about protection from the Lord. On our way to the Tulsa airport on Sunday, uh, the uh, October 23rd, the Lord protected us from a serious car accident. We were literally just minutes away from where it happened. My son and I both knew it was a divine protection as we drove by the wreckage and were shocked by what we saw. 
And then she shares some other wonderful things about being on a plane and just seeing certain things that would remind her, for instance, uh, a lady wearing a Peyton Manning Broncos jersey on the plane and then seeing on those movies, the underdog movie, American Underdog, which is great. It's about Kurt Warner who loves the Lord and what a wonderful story it was to watch God work in his life. And then just beginning to be made mindful of certain things concerning, you know, I, I like testimonies where people become mindful by what they see. In other words, somebody sees up into the sky cloud formations, and those are interesting, and somebody else looks at them and says, well, maybe those are actually some things that have meaning. You drive by certain things and see things that you just kind of allow to go right over, just like water off a duck's back, and someone else drives by, and actually the Lord speaks to them and shows them that there's meaning Oh, folks, we're getting to the point where it's time for us to really pay attention to the smallest of little things that God will cause in your heart to become the reason why you endear your heart to him and prayers are answered. Go to jhmi at jimhockaday.com, which is our website email. You'll find it on jimhockaday.com and send us your grace stories. Great to be with you. Happy New Year to everyone. This is going to be a year of testimonies beyond what we can imagine.